that's it ladies and gentlemen it's time for the next session of the day on a very interesting subject packaging content management and the role it plays in ensuring regulatory compliance and a fantastic session completely completely different from what we have been hearing throughout the day and something extremely interesting here and to present this i would like to call on stage with a big round of applause mr avinash woody director of product marketing from manage artworks can we have avinash with a big round of applause avinash welcome to the stage and looking forward to a great session excuse me point of the slides we're just going to get a point of the slides and then we can begin it was a nice lunch wasn't it yes okay my only job is to make sure that you guys don't doze off in the next 20 minutes <laughs> so uh, let them let them figure it out uh, when it comes to the slides but i think i'll just start with a quick intro so i'm avinash as they said uh, what i wanted to talk about today was uh, how can you essentially uh, make sure that you're regulatory compliant and uh, does packaging content management in an organized fashion Uh, help in any way to get that going. So that's uh, essentially the topic for today. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what packaging content management is, uh, what can we do, and how it helps. Uh, hopefully, I'll cover a few practical scenarios as well that happen uh, in our day-to-day -day basis as we go. Um, so let's see. Right. Okay. So um, I'm from Manage Artworks. I think in very simple terms, uh, we are an end-to-end -end packaging content uh, and artwork management platform. We are a software company. Um, one of the things that uh, I tell everybody that I meet is we don't design artworks, we don't print them. Uh, we just provide a software that helps manage everything all the way from content till you actually hit your shelves, uh, be it digital or physical. So that's in a nutshell from 30,000 feet about what we do. I'll try and cover a little bit about how each of these different pieces come together. Um, okay, so I think there's a slight delay between this. Okay, um, so I think a little bit about us. Uh, you know, why should you listen to Avinash from Manage Artworks? Uh, it's because for today, as of now, uh, for the last 15 years, we have more than 4,000 brands that are already using Manage Artworks across the globe. Uh, we are based out of uh, Chennai, and we have offices in the U.S. and Paris. So, just a quick intro on uh, who we are. Um, another interesting metric that we keep uh, a track of is how many packaging artworks have we helped process over the last 10, 15 years. So, um, you know, this is about a million, 14,000 and counting. Uh, I see a lot of familiar faces in the room. So, some of you would have. Uh, seen my presentation earlier, and you're probably thinking that this guy has the same slides, but no, the numbers have changed. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably going to do a quiz at the end, but yeah. So that's a little bit about us, uh, who we are, what we do. Uh, like I said before, I started this whole thing. I said uh, we do everything from content management till your package hits the shelf. So if I have to break it into four nice little pieces it's content design review and release so i can make sure uh, that all of your content is in one place the right people approve the right content and once all the content is approved we have uh, tools that integrate with both adobe illustrator and indesign so your approved packaging content can then make its way onto your packaging artwork artwork management is what we essentially call review uh, i see some of my customers as well in the room so uh, you can essentially proofread your artworks uh, the right departments can approve the packaging artwork and you can hit the shelf and the last tool is uh, something that will help you hit the market actually so this so there are two things that we do one is uh, you know if you're getting your packaging artwork printed you can compare your uh, printed packaging artwork against your digital file will tell you if there is any difference other than that we can also make sure that your right content the ecom content your pack shots that you have reach your digital shelves you know even if that's amazon any other websites that you sell on even if it's your own website we can make sure that the right content goes so whenever your packaging artwork changes whenever your pack shots change we can make sure that the right content reflects everywhere you sell so that's uh, again from a very top level what we do so 
why is this whole thing important? How is packaging content managed today? Uh, as, again, uh, in all of my years, what I'm given to understand is, you know, it's typically Word or Excel. If you have some product information management or product lifecycle management systems, sometimes it exists there. Uh, if you are going through an Amazon or any other syndicator where you have all of your content, maybe they have a version of your packaging content. But then what I do realize is a lot of times if I go to a brand and you know, pull out a random SKU from the shelf and say, can you give me the right content for this particular packaging artwork, more often than not, they find it hard to do so. And that's a problem that we aim to fix uh, with our solution. So what happens if you don't have an organized packaging content system? So your packaging content is incomplete, it's unapproved, it's inconsistent at best. And when you bring all of that together, that's the recipe uh, essentially for disaster. So um, some numbers, I think, uh, they still hold good. More often than not, your Packaging iterations are actually caused because your pack copy uh, is incorrect. Again, more than 87% of the time, we realize that uh, you know, nobody's sure if the right content you know, has actually gone into the artwork, is it actually approved. So there is a brief, it went together. More often than not, once the artwork is created, when the V1 uh, keeps going around for approval is when content changes happen. And that's a scenario uh, you know, that we are trying to avoid. So, the idea for us is to make sure that you hit the markets faster. You know, you make sure that your artworks are right the very first time. So um, from here, I think what I wanted to cover was, uh, this is how a typical cartons packaging artwork looks like when you open it all. I'm sure you know best. Uh, if you take all the content that was there on that artwork and you put it in uh, my system, this is how it will look like. You know, for every element, the right people, the right departments can come in. They can approve. Uh, you can even define to your designer where that piece of text is supposed to go, front panel, left panel, side panel, back panel, you can talk about all of that. And you can make sure that the regulatory folks approve the regulatory content, quality, marketing, packaging, and likewise. One question that I get very often is, this is great, what happens when uh, I already have a few SKUs in place, I want to create a new variant, or I just want to create a different size. Most of my content will be the same. In which case, what we can do is, if you already have one SKU, all of its content in place, I can copy from that SKU, I can create uh, content for the new SKU. So again, probably two or three elements change, everything else stays the same, and you know whatever is already approved will stay that way. You do not have to recreate your brief from the scratch using the system. Another question that I keep getting also is uh, that I have four uh, or five product categories where all of my products fit. Can I actually create a template and say that every time I'm coming up with a new SKU for cakes, I want to make sure that all of these elements are there. And I want to make sure that these people edit it, these people approve it. I want to make sure that these are my timelines. I can make sure that all of this is taken care of. The system can uh, not only work in English, it can take care of your translations, it can work, uh, you know, it can bring your translators in, it can bring your design agencies in. It's just uh, seamless as the way it collaborates. So um, I spoke for a little bit, I said, once you have all the right content, you can use our Adobe plugin and you can bring the right content to the artwork. This is how that looks like. So when the designer opens up your packaging artwork, all of your approved content appears in a neat little panel on the right. All they have to do is drag and drop the content and it makes its way to the artwork. So there is no copy pasting, there is no typing content, there is no way for that content to be incorrect. Uh, in some time I'll show you another tool which will actually compare the text which, it, which made its way to the packaging artwork and it will compare that with the brief that you've approved. So there is another level of check to make sure that you know, nobody inadvertently caused an error uh, in the pack copy. So one of the questions is, uh, is there a way for us to add a little more intelligence uh, to the packaging uh, artwork creation process? The answer is yes. And I think I'm going to take a few scenarios and I'm going to talk about how we've uh, kind of added a little bit of intelligence in each of these scenarios. So starting with, gee, ah, there you go, uh, calculation of PDP. Now, I'm a software company. Uh, I have a website. I look at it every day. I'd be delighted if people come look at a certain page and say, oh, great, this is the product. Let me sign up. Let me talk to them and see what they have. Funny enough, I have a blog on my website that says how to calculate PDP for an artwork. 
and that's my most visited page for, la for the last decade consistently. So we keep updating it <laughs> every time that happens. But then it's such an important element. I think uh, a lot of what you do, I'm sure your regulatory folks, you know best than me. Uh, a lot of things depend on the PDP size that you have. I just took one example uh, when it comes to your uh, wedge, wedge symbol and you know what the FSSA says, how it changes. Uh, per PDP size. So if you define, so uh, what you see on your left is a screenshot of uh, what we call an element value master. So I take an approved logo from you, uh, approved symbol from you, I keep it in my system. And when you're creating a new packaging artwork, if you pick saying that, hey, the PDP size for this pack is, uh, you know, up to 100 centimeters square then the system will automatically show the right size of the width symbol that has to be placed on the packaging artwork. So that's possible with my system. Uh, what you see on your right is uh, a simple PDP calculation. So we have uh, an area measurement tool. So what you see in yellow uh, is the tool you just drag and drop over your PDP area. I can tell you, uh, you know, what the PDP is. You can change the scale in which it measures. So, one scenario you know, in, in which we can automate, avoid that confusion, whether you're using the right uh, uh, symbol or not. <clears throat> the other uh, area, I think I'll talk about it in a little bit, is uh, it's not just the size, but it's also about the color, the Pantone of the width symbol that's used. It's defined by FSSAI. So I have uh, what's called a densitometer. So if you just point it at the green dot, it'll tell you the right Pantone. So if it matches, great. If it's not, you know that there is something to fix right there. Another scenario based on uh, your addresses. So uh, I'm sure all of you are familiar with these scenarios, right? It's manufactured in one place, it's marketed by a different entity, or you're importing a certain good and you're selling. So what I can do, what you're seeing at the bottom of the screen is essentially templates that I'm creating based on your business scenarios. So if you say that, hey, I have a product that's being manufactured uh, for brand manager artworks at plant A, and if it's manufactured uh, by me, this is the address that has to come up. So you can save these addresses as templates, and as you select this information, the system will automatically show you that, hey, this is the address that you're supposed to pick up and, and put on the artwork. And this address is approved by you already, so there is uh, no way that this can go wrong. And uh, you know, in, in these cases, for example, manufactured and marketed, if you have two addresses, two different FSSAI license numbers, all of them are captured in, in my master, and it's very easy for you to relate and make sure that the right information made its way again to the artwork. Let's talk about one more scenario. Now, this is uh, about font compliance, one of the biggest uh, hassles that I hear. Um, <laughs> I still hear today people come and tell me that, hey, we still take a printout, we take a ruler, and we try and measure the size of the characters to make sure it doesn't uh, you know, uh, go down the minimum for that particular PDP. So we take font measurement very seriously, and there are three areas or three different ways in which we can help you uh, make sure that your artworks are font compliant. Uh, what you're seeing on your screen is our uh, packaging content system. So when the regulatory team approves a certain piece of text, there is an option for you to define what the font size should be as an instruction to your teams internally. So when the designer picks up the artwork, he is looking at this information, and the right font size is actually being brought onto the artwork. So that's check one in terms of an instruction for the approved pack content. Step two in my Adobe plugin, I can define what the font size should be for certain pieces of text. So for example, if it's an allergen statement, if my PDP is so and so, you know, make sure that you align it to the left, make sure that you give it this particular font property in this font family, and it's possible. The system automatically makes sure that the font is in that particular font size, that font family, and the exact alignment that you've defined here. Check number three. So the first two steps is where you've created that particular artwork. This is where you're reviewing the artwork. You want to make sure that you know, it's still done accurately. So I have a font analysis tool, you know, which actually pulls up all the text which is on the artwork and arranges it by font. Then I also have a tool tip where you can just mouse over any area in the artwork, it'll tell you the font information. So for example, on this screen, uh, it's hitting at 100 grams, and it's telling you the font size, uh, cap height, x height, font width, etc. for that particular character. And towards the end, I still have a checklist. So somebody who is reviewing this, I have a checklist to them say that, hey, go back, check, make sure that the net weight uh, you know, statements font is accurate. So all of these checks are possible. Okay. 
Um, another area that we can help, another practical scenario, um, is, you know, this is uh, my new content creation or new artwork creation form. And for example, if you select saying that this particular SKU that I'm creating is not for retail use, uh, then obviously FSSAI says that you've got to have a statement that says not for retail sale on your packaging artwork, and I can make sure that that text is automatically populated based on this scenario again. So based on what you're filling up in the form, when you say no, one, it populates the text, two, by any chance if the designer has removed the text, it will again do a revalidation and tell you that, hey, that text is supposed to be there because you said that the product is not for retail use. So there's again two checks in place to make sure that we do not miss uh, you know, a legal guideline. Another scenario that I could cover, oh, there you go, nutrition information. So another interesting area. So I have an area in my system where you can bring in all of your nutritional information for a given SKU. Now, what you see at the bottom are three different types of nutrition panels, one for a combo pack, one a linear panel, another a vertical panel. So based on the information you populate here, you can create any type of panel that is FSSAI compliant. I do it for multiple markets. We, do it, we can do an FDA compliant label, an FSA compliant label. So just like that, we can do an FSSAI compliant label as well. Uh, another interesting area, you know, about kilocalories, I think you see this uh, text that says uh, your recommended daily elements is about 2,000 kilocalories. So if you want to make sure that that statement uh, is accurately populated, that's possible as well. Okay, allergen declaration. So this area is where, uh, you know, um, another very common area, you have your ingredients, there are a set of known allergens and you want to make sure that you've declared those allergens. So there are two things I can do. If your ingredients have any known allergen, I can throw a warning, I can say that, hey, your ingredients has an allergen, but you do not have an allergen statement to make sure that, you know, you take a look at that allergen statement. If uh, there is a scenario where you've already added, you just want to compare and make sure that it's clean, I also have a, a copy comparison, so it's comparing your packaging artwork with your approved content. It's telling you that, yes, you have the statement, and yes, the statement is accurate, and there is no discrepancy. So we can make sure that you've got your allergen statements right. Let's see, I think I have one more scenario. Okay, so I think those, those were scenarios. I think a few other things that we can do, uh, obviously I spoke about the densitometer a while ago, so we can check colors that are there on your packaging artwork, you know, Pantone, CMYK, process colors, all of that is possible. Uh, we can check for fonts that are there, I just spoke about it, so I'm gonna skip through this. We can identify barcodes, we can tell you the scan grade, magnification of a barcode, so that information is out there. We can also uh, essentially compare uh, two versions of an artwork, I'll come to that. What you're seeing on your screen is a spell check tool. So I can even uh, do a spell check on your packaging artwork. Uh, today it works in more than 27 languages. I can keep adding dictionaries. If you have words that are, uh, for example, um, you know, uh, chemical, chemical names, or if it's uh, a medical dictionary related word, you can keep adding them to the dictionary and it'll keep populating. So it'll make sure that it doesn't show the same error one more time. So this is comparison. So if you have two versions of your packaging artwork, I can compare both versions. I can tell you if there is any difference in text or images that's there on a packaging artwork. And if there is any, I'll highlight it. The system will tell you that, hey, uh, you know, this is a difference in text, this is a difference in image. Uh, it's a formatting difference, it's a casing difference. Uh, certain text is only there on the master file, certain text is only there on the sample file. All these scenarios can be covered uh, using managed artworks. And I think uh, we are coming towards the end. So just one area I wanted to highlight was, uh, do I really need a system uh, you know, that's, that's this deep? Do I have to invest in all that time and effort? So I just took one simple example of uh, Palaji. So I'm looking at, I just took all the data that you see on the screen is uh, from their website. Uh, if you notice one similarity, each of these are different product lines, obviously, but uh, you would have noticed that these are different SKUs. Uh, it could be a different flavor in that particular brand or product line. So today, if you look at it, I just pulled out some analytics and it looks like 
They have about 15 sub-brands, about 57 variants, a total of 228 SKUs that they've listed on the website. Now, if you do not have an organized packaging content system, you would have created 228 briefs for each of those packaging artworks. But if you have the system, like I told you earlier, you can copy from an existing approved SKU, you can create it from a template. So that number would have come probably down to 57, and that's a ton of time saved when creating uh, new packaging. So uh, I think towards the beginning of the conversation, I said we want to make sure that you get to the market faster. So if you're taking three months today, if I can get you to the market in two months, that's a month's worth of sales uh, that I'm helping you make. So that's, that's the overall spiel, and that's why I think you know, a system like this is very beneficial. Um, towards the end, there you go. I think just a little bit about uh, who we are. So, uh, you know, we are uh, an artificial intelligence driven company. So, all of these rules that I tell you are essentially powered by AI. Uh, we are an ISO 9001, 27001, 27017 certified company. We are compliant uh, with FDA 21 CFR 11, UNX 11, all of that jazz. And obviously, we are hosted on Microsoft Azure. So, the solution is completely cloud based. There is no hardware or software requirements that you would need to begin. So that's, that's about us. We are present across the world. India, obviously, is our head office. We've got partner network in the Middle East and South America. We have offices in US and uh, Europe. So that's a little bit about us. I think uh, I have a few slides about, yeah. So some of our customers from India and a couple of other locations, predominantly CPG names is what I've taken and put up. But our website has a list, an extensive list of all of our customers. So that's pretty much me. I think that's time. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.